got my water, got my stack of books. Let's do this. Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books, Ink, and Paper. Welcome if this is your first time and thank you for all of your well wishes, your thoughts, your prayers, your congratulations and excitement around the birth of my little granddaughter, Lyra Claire. If you didn't see the post that I put in the YouTube channel area, I did have my granddaughter. She did come early. So I'm there during the week and home on the weekends. And I'm going to try to film as much as I can while I am back at home, but I may end up filming there too. So we'll just see, but it has been a joyful week for sure. We can a little few days and we're just over the moon. So I'll pop a picture here for you to see that what she looks like. And, uh, but again, there's some posts on the YouTube page as well. And I'm sure this won't be the last, but we are just it's the best joy, just the best, best joy. There is nothing more special, I think, than the child of your child. Now, my children are still very, very special to me. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> they really, really are. But those of you who know, you know. There's just something about watching your child parent and, and seeing the child that they have put on the earth. It's just... I'm just stuck on um, baby time stuck. Okay, let's talk about books though. <laughs> Actually, my focus since baby came has been declined. Um, and so I'm hoping to get a little bit of reading done this weekend and see if it's just, you know, that I'm doing so much and that I'm just focused on her constantly or if it's, you know, more than that. But in the month of July, however, I did really, really well with the books that I read. So let's talk about that. All right, let me get my glasses because I can't read all this stuff. Okay, in the month of July, I read seven books and those books tallied up to 2,550 pages. My average time finishing those books was eight days. So I read about you know, it took me about a week to read each book, but I read more than one book in one week, um, obviously, because I had seven. Uh, so my moods, the most prevalent mood for the books I read was emotional. <laughs> very, very true. Followed by tense and mysterious. Next then would be funny and dark and then adventurous and reflective, and finally hopeful. <laughs> so the books I read in the month of July were not exactly upbeat, but maybe I'm making up for that this month. We'll see. <laughs> My pace was medium for 57% of the time and fast for 43% of the time. So that was pretty good. I think by and large, most of them were pretty fast for me to get through. Uh, my page counts, I read 14% uh, of those, uh, that reading was for a 500 plus page book and the rest, 86% were between 300 and 499 pages. And everything I read in the month of July was fiction. I am not doing well on my nonfiction choices, you guys. I did read a nonfiction book. Well, I listened to it and I read it on ebook and audio. I have it on both ways. I did listen to one called Never Far From Home by Bruce. What is Bruce's name? Never Far From Home is by Bruce Jackson. There we go. Uh, so Bruce Jackson and I have met and we are, I'm learning about him and his challenges, but I have not completed Bruce's book. And he is one of the ones that I had listed on the books that I wanted to read this year. So that's good. I made a little bit of progress there, but not close to finishing by any stretch. <laughs> I read three books <clears throat> that were mysteries, three books that were historical, two that were thrillers or considered also literary or contemporary, one romance and one crime. So we will talk a little bit about that in a moment. And then the format was 71% print, which I think that's 
sort of true, but also there were a couple of times I did a mix, but I did read a lot of print books. I, uh, you'll see that in a moment. And then on audio, 29%. I think that says 29. Yes. It's hard for me to see today. I'm not sure why. My average rating was 4.14. So it was a good, good reading month. And my peak day to read was the 19th and or days to read were between the 19th and the 22nd of the month. So that was the the days I really pressed in. So those are my stats. I don't do a diagram yet. I might end up doing that at some point, but not yet. So let's talk about what I read first. I actually have a few tabs in this one that I put in. I did do a combination for this because it is a chunker. This was one that would count for big book summer for sure, because this is 576 pages. The Lincoln Highway is quite a story and it was very, very easy to continue to read. I really wanted to find out what happened to these characters. Let me remember their names correctly. Emmett, <clears throat> who is 18, is released from prison and he is able to go back home after he had been in prison for an assault, um, which led to an involuntary manslaughter charge. And his mother had been gone for a long time and his father had recently died and he had left the house, he thought, to Emmett and his brother, Billy, who is eight years old. Uh, Billy is, Emmett and Billy are my favorite characters in this book. Although it's interesting because even the ones that are disagreeable and somewhat unlikable, I really liked them. So Emmett discovers <laughs> that his father's financial situation deteriorated while he was gone. And that was very unsettling because he really thought that he was going to be able to support his brother and live in this house. And it was being foreclosed upon by the person who had found, you know, funded the loan. And then two people that Emmett knew from the prison where he was, the work farm where he was incarcerated, are in his, in the trunk of his dad's car. He doesn't realize it for a while, but they are. And so a journey along the Lincoln Highway or parts of it ensues. So this is told in a period of 10 days and it is definitely a perspective of each of them and a couple of other characters as well. So it's multi-dimensional, multi-faceted, multi-generational. So I will say this, there's things that happen and you're like, seriously, you're rooting for them so much. <laughs> And it just feels like, oh my gosh, why? But then some of the things that happen are just so fun or so exciting or so necessary for the plot. So I just absolutely adored this. And I adored the, the sort of the moments in which you were holding your breath and you were so frightened for one or more of them. And then suddenly everything's okay again, at least for a while. <laughs> I really, really recommend this. I'm so glad I read it and I can't wait to get to my next Amor Tolls, which actually has been in my reading bag all week and I haven't gotten to it yet, but maybe this is the week. Maybe that will be the one that turns me around. Oh, and I gave this one five stars. Absolutely. Hands down five stars. The next one I read in hardback is Marrying the Ketchups by Jennifer Close. You know, I picked this recently because it was one that I was really anticipating and it's about the Cubs and it's about Chicago and it just felt like I had to have this book and I wanted to read it very, very soon. So this was part of my summer reading list. This one is not over 300 pages, I don't think. Oh, it's just over 300 pages. This one is a new author to me as well. And it is, again, about the Chicago family. They had a restaurant for years and the there's a number of children and they are grieving over the death of one of their parents. They are also all having their own level of stuff that happens to people, right? Some are having relationship issues. Some are returning home after having been away for a long time and starting over again, but also being a part of the restaurant because that's what this family does. Uh, there's girls, there's boys, there's there's just this intense family um, connection, but also a lot of family drama and angst. 
I really loved it. The reason it drew my attention was because it was talking about the fact that COVID had just happened. Cubs won the World Series, which, of course, no one ever expected. And Trump was elected president and their dad uh, drops dead. So they are just sort of feeling a little un tethered because these things just, you know, were surprising to them. I, it is not particularly political in case you were wondering, although it does come up now and again, how they feel about Trump, but generally speaking, that's the least focus, <laughs> uh, focused area in this particular book, but it is, I just really love this family drama and it's made me notice now that I am leaning more towards family dramas these days, especially contemporary family dramas. So I really appreciated this book a lot. And I gave this one four stars. I'm not sure what made me go from a higher rating to four, but I guess it was just, it was solid and I, and I really enjoyed it. So four stars means I liked it a lot, right? I really, really did. I liked it a lot. Then I listened to James by Percival Everett. This was one I was also highly anticipating and a lot, a lot, a lot of people have read it. In fact, I was getting so many reviews about James that I was slightly concerned that the hype was going to impact my enjoyment of this novel. And it, I don't think it did. I do think that it wasn't a five-star read for me, which I was somewhat surprised about because I thought it would be. And so it was a four-star read for me. I think Maybe what made that happen was that there were times where I just felt like somewhat like the Lincoln Highway, but not in the same way, I guess. There was movement forward and then there wasn't. And there was movement forward and then there wasn't. And honestly, I just felt like I, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with that. I just, I just needed to. I just needed to have something good happen. However, I knew what this was about. It's a retelling of Huck Finn. It's a brilliantly done retelling, I think, of Huckleberry Finn and 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 his relationship with Jim. I loved the way that this was crafted. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I will say that I loved the depth and breadth to to James. I loved his abilities, even though he had to hide those abilities. Uh, a lot of the time. I loved the way that he continued to care for Huck. And the ending of it was just so beautiful and so sweet. And I just, I was, it just made me so happy. I, I just love it. So that is my second by Percival Everett. It will not be my last for sure. The next one I read, both in physical copy from my library and also Everand audio, was One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. You know, I'm a fan of Ruth Ware and I was really looking forward to this one. It was a closed circle, kind of isolated community, kind of, and then there were none type plot about a reality show that is brand new and the creators have reached out to a number of people, including Nico, who is an actor. Well, I don't even know that they reached out to Nico. I think Nico reached out to them. He's pretty full of himself. And of course, a reality show for Nico would push him forward in his fledgling career as an actor. And his girlfriend of several years, Lila is asked by Nico to participate in this and she's not real keen on this and she's got a job and her job is kind of wrapping up and she's not sure what she's going to do next but she could use the money obviously too and if they split it that would be great so she decides okay she'll go and when they get there it feels a little weird like the people who set this up weren't quite prepared perhaps it feels like they are not supported uh, in understanding what they're supposed to do. And they're just kind of, you know, put in front of the camera. You need to talk now. You need to do this. You need to walk over there. Those kinds of things, which made it feel really disingenuous. But then a storm happens and the storm starts to impact a number of them. It is being billed as an Agatha Christie-esque kind of, and then there were none piece and it, it I would say that it does align with that differently but it has some of those vibes she does have a lot of Christy traits in all of her novels and nods to Christy books as well so that's no surprise I would say 
Uh, I would say that it felt like this one, I mean, it was a four star read for me. It's, it's not necessarily one of my top favorites of hers. I haven't even purchased it yet. Although, of course, you know, I was on the book buying ban until a couple of days ago, <laughs> but I don't, I think I will purchase it to keep it, I think, but I'm not certain to be honest with you. I'm just not, I don't know. So we'll see, but I did enjoy it. I thought it was a unique plot. I did like the way the characters were developed. They weren't all very likable. Some of them were very likable. You rooted for them along the way. It was yeah, it was it was good. It was good. It wasn't great. It was good. I read this book this summer. It was a summer read for me. I think it's also going to count for big book summer. It is. It's over 400 pages. This one is a new author to me as well and one that I decided to get because it was uh, on the most anticipated reads lists of a lot of people. And it just sounded like it was a cute premise to me. I did a combination of listening to this and reading it physically as well, because my library had an audio copy of it. Since then, I also found they have an audio copy of Part of Your World, which I have not listened to yet, but I did borrow it. And I'm probably going to have to return it before it goes back because they all come in at the same time. This was a delight for me. I really enjoyed it. It was a nice escape. It was a nice kind of a reset palette cleanser really from some of the heavier books that I read this month. It is about Emma who feels like she is cursed because every guy she's fallen in love with ends up leaving her and going on to find the love of his life. And Justin who has pretty much the same challenge. But what ends up happening is, and I don't think I realized when I read the synopsis that they haven't just chosen to date each other because they broke up with their people and she was actually engaged to be married to her guy. They end up connected because the, her guy and his girl knew each other. So I think that that is not necessarily in the synopsis and maybe for a reason, but I don't think it hurts to tell you that. I really enjoyed this. Again, it was the first for me of Abby Jimenez. I thought it was well written. I, you know, had no expectation of it being particularly deep, but it was very well done and the characters were very well developed. I understand that the characters float in between these other two books that she has written, the part of your world and yours truly, which I own yours truly. It was a book of the month free book for me, I think for my birthday maybe, but I would not be opposed to reading another Abby Jimenez. I have had this since April and I have been looking forward to reading it ever since. I've loved this cover since the very first moment that I heard about this book. I do like also the other characters, the backstory folks that are in the wings supporting or making fun or just things, good things happening. It, I, I really enjoyed that. It is also a good bit of a story about family and how family contributes to your relationships with others, which is important. So it had a bit of family drama in it, which again, I've been really drawn to this month. So that was quite something. And I really like it a lot. I recommend it if this kind of book is something that you think you would like or that you know you will. A lot of people are reading that one too. I ended up reading a lot of very popular books this month and not as many that were obscure. Interestingly, and maybe one that's a little obscure, interestingly, James, when I, first of all, Everett was somewhat lesser known for sure until James came out and some other things that he's done recently. You know, he, he wrote the novel that I loved, Erasure, that was made into the movie, American Fiction. So I'm sure that helped to lift him and elevate him up into the mainstream. So I'm really happy to see that, that he's getting a lot of buzz and a lot of press and he's a great guy and he's a great writer. So I think that these are pretty hyped, but not hyped enough that I didn't enjoy them. Now, this one. Oh, I buddy read this with Krista at Books and Jams and Michelle at Michelle and Reads. You've probably already seen their videos if you follow some of the people that I do and that I talk about a lot. 
this was our decision to read together. And I struggled with this for a while. I was very, very excited about this. I loved everything else I've read by this author. And I thought this is going to be incredible. And while it was in the end incredible, and in the end, I ended up giving it four stars. I thought I was going to DNF it for a good portion of the middle of this book. Not even kidding. So this one is about a cult that was um, sort of destroyed by a number of factors, one being that some people were incarcerated, one being that some people were killed at the height of this sort of cultish behavior. And a young child was in the custody of two of the people from the cult who had given birth to her, and she disappears, and no one ever knows what happens to her. And so the question is what happened to this baby and this particular writer reporter investigative reporter wants to know what happened so her name is amanda amanda bailey and then she also has a friend who is an investigative journalist whose name is oliver but she and oliver have had a falling out so there's a, a very angsty part to their relationship which is um described in this book through a number of text messages and conversations that they have back and forth as Janice Hallett has been known to do and people love including me very epistolary a uh, novel very much reports documents scripts text messages lots of different things which I don't mind I've loved that before what I was challenged with was that this just got so weird in the middle. Like it just got so far-fetched to me, weird. And I was just having a little trouble with this, like understanding why we were doing this, why no characters would really do this. Would this guy really experience all these things and really say that? Like it just felt so off the wall odd. However, when it all wrapped up, <laughs> I was like, oh, and I realized how very, very clever it was. So much so that I would eventually one day like to reread this again, coming from the lens of knowing what's going to happen. What am I noticing along the way now that I didn't notice that first time? And I'm not the only person who didn't notice it. Krista and Michelle both had the same experience. Michelle loved it. She gave it a five star. I think Krista was around four like me, maybe a little bit lower. I can't remember. But holy cow, we really struggled with <laughs> some of these things that were happening. And I'm glad I, I stuck through it. I'm glad that I persevered. I'm glad that I read it. I can't wait to get to the next one, which is the Twyfer Code, because she has another one coming out very, very soon. But goodness sakes, it was a ride. It was really, really a ride. It was a ride I wanted to get off for a while, but I'm glad that I finished. So that was fun. It was really, really fun in the end. And the last read for me in the month of July was Small Mercies by Dennis Lehane. This was also made available to me on Everand and I had popped it in there a while, a little while ago, not terribly long ago, because I, it was one of the original um, books that was put forward that I actually said, yeah, I think that one would be a good one for the booktube prize. And I had not read anything by Dennis Lehane. So that was also another first author for me. So of all of these, one, two, three, four are first authors for me. That's quite something. But I just, something about this really called to me. So this is about the Fennessy family, essentially Mary Pat Fennessy, who works as a nurse at a, or in a medical field, not, I don't think she's a nurse at a, at a hospital. The, the start of this book, her daughter doesn't come home one night and her daughter is 17-ish, I think and that's not necessarily unusual for her and her daughter but it's you know I mean she's mildly upset about it but also the the night that her daughter doesn't come home a boy is found murdered a black man young man is found murdered uh by the railroad tracks it turns out Mary Pat works with that boy's mother so that's how they're connected. And Mary Pat's daughter doesn't come home the next night and she starts to try to find out what happened to her daughter. This book is very, very violent. So let's just say sensitivity warnings, violence for sure. And the violence was surprising to me. <laughs> surprising to me. The lengths that Mary Pat would go to in this book to find her child and to 
to be with people who she thought were responsible for something happening to her child were quite shocking and surprising to me. I just did not expect this. I've not read anything else by this author. I will say that this was a four-star read for me as well. Because I listened to it on audiobook, um, I think it for me, it came alive, but in a different way, if that makes sense. And I think that's true for me with a lot of audiobooks. Like I can get lost in a story if it's a written word. It's you know, fine, easy for me to do. I can make these things up in my imagination. But what made this audiobook so incredible was the culture of this community, this um, Irish Catholic community, the relationships the crime at this time because it's set in the 70s I think yes 1974 so the culture of that time the racism of that time the crime in that particular area of the country it just it's just absolutely delicious and difficult <laughs> That's my, that's my two words, delicious and difficult. Now I have not read Mystic River. I have not read Shutter Island, although I have wanted to, and I hear <clears throat> people talk about them all the time. And I know that they're very, very good. So this will not be my last Dennis Lehane novel, but it was intense. I got to tell you, it was intense. And as a mother reading it, I also was just really rooting for, obviously rooting for Mary Pat the whole way and just noticing the the impact in the 70s, too, of what women had access to and and what they didn't. And then that relationship with this woman that she worked with. Just read it. Just read it. If, if this sounds in any way like something you would like, read it. It was quite, quite something. And it was so well written. Some of the things that he said were just like, oh, like the quotes got me. They got me good. So small mercies. And that is it. That is my wrap up for July of 2024. I really enjoyed it. I really had, a, a, I felt like I was really plowing through a lot of great books. And then this month, it's the middle of the month and I've only read two books, but that's okay because I have this beautiful little thing to cuddle and snuggle and everything's great. And I have some time off, so we'll see what happens. If I'm able to focus a little bit better again, then so be it. And if I'm not, that's okay too, because I'm way ahead of my reading goal. I'm actually at 47 books read of the 55 that I had hoped to read this year. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to exceed that. But again, everything's great. Everything's fine. What's most important is my family and the time I get to spend with them. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you read in the month of July. If you've read any of these books, let me know that as well. If any of these authors are favorites of yours and you've read something else by them that you think I need to pay attention to, please tell me that in the comments below as well. And as always, happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.